We need you, Lord, to move in our midst, O oh God, for we're anticipating you to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ever ask or think. It's in this moment, God, that we can't do it without you. Come on, Sam, let's talk to him when we come. When we come together on one accord. With our eyes focused on him. With our eyes focused on him. Hands lifted and we surrender. Hands lifted we surrender. We're giving all control to him. Giving all control to him. For we want the glory to fall down we on us. We want the glory to fall down on us. We await your presence, God. We await your presence. For we won't move until you come. We won't move until you come. We invite you in for you are the Holy One. We invite one. you in, O oh Holy One. doesn't stand a chance doesn't stand a chance because anything that's not like him anything that's not like him we decree it will be defeated at every will be hand defeated at every hand the reason why is he is wonderful and powerful he is wonderful and powerful and against him none other can against stand against him none other can stand so lord we come in the midst hey, of our praise so today lord, we come so we can praise. feel your touch again. So we can feel your touch again. Somebody say a move of God. A mighty move of God. A mighty move of God. We are waiting. And tears of praise. It's coming, yes it is. A move of God. My God, my God. I'm going over to you.
say so. Those who have been redeemed from the enemy. Anybody been redeemed in here? Hallelujah. Anybody been redeemed by the hand of the Lord? Come on, you ought to show some sign. Come on, let's be a witness. We need faith something in the world to know that he'll receive you. He'll save you. He'll keep you. He'll cover you. He'll protect you. Thank you. 
Somebody ought to say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, I woke up this morning and I said, oh, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you. you know, I had been up since 3 o'clock this morning. Amen. It was a moment in which I said, well, it won't be long. Soon we'll be leaving here. Praise the Lord. Amen. But it is evident for our particular place of growth. Come on, help us. It's inevitable. Amen. For what God wants to do in our midst. And so we're looking forward to this particular shift um, that in terms of the reset that will take place uh, beginning in May. And as a part of that, we will move forward with what God wants to do in our midst. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's prepare ourselves. Amen. That we can go into the word of the Lord. I want to invite you to attention for just a few moments to a very familiar passage of scripture that we come to find out of first Samuel chapter number 17. First Samuel chapter number 17 is where I want to uh, invite you for just uh, a moment. And I want to uh, I want to focus on quite a few verses um, in here. Um, out of verse 17, I want to uh, just for this period Take a look at verse number 10, verse number 10. But I want you to um, simply have in your, in your time of study, I want you to take a look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 33 through 51. Verses uh, 33 through 51. Um, if I was to read all of that, um, we, it might take up more of our time in terms of the nature of uh, my time of preaching, but I want to focus in for just a moment um, on verse number 10. And this is what the word of the Lord says to us. It says, And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Somebody say this day. This day. Give me a man that we may fight together. He says, I defy, I defy, I challenge, I, I urge you. Uh, I, I, I want to send this out. I want to send a notice. Give, give me someone um, that, that can, can, can fight. And I, I want to talk to you for just a few moments uh, from this particular uh, thought to uh, remain fighting the giant. Yeah. Remain fighting. Someone say the giants. The, the giants. Remain fighting um, the giants. And, 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 and it's from this that, that I want to deal with uh, specifically as we've been in this overall series that we're going back to in terms of uh, the, the, the healthy spirituality, emotionality. Uh, I want to talk to you about dealing with your passivity. Dealing with your, somebody say passivity. Dealing with your passivity. The importance of how you gotta, come on, keep striving. The importance of how you have to uh, make a great effort. Uh, because how many know again, God wants to do something, right? And, and in doing that, the important thing, my brothers and sisters, is, is this. Uh, you gotta conquer um, the giants in your life, yeah. right? You gotta, you gotta understand, identify, and, and and this is the thing that I want us to um, basically take a look at, if you will, for for just a, a moment. Um, what are the things in, in these particular three things? What what is it that um, is distracting you? What is what is distracting you? Um, um, what causes a a detour? Uh, what, what, what causes detour? What is it that you come to find uh, uh, that, that can drain you? These are the important things that we can, we can look at, we can identify uh, when we are facing um, giants. Anybody that can say that I have giants in the midst of, of, of life? And, and so um, here, here's the, the backdrop. For, for the nature of the text that we can look at um, as we have seen it um, before. Uh, the children of Israel, 
being on one mountain, one mountain yeah. looking to get to the other mountain. Yeah. Uh, but in the midst of going from one mountain to uh, the next mountain, uh, they had to go through a valley. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, which helps me to uh, realize the fact that uh, you will have in your life more valley experiences. Right. That's why David said, yea, though I walk, come on, through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear no evil. Because he's, ah, he's with me. But, 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 but in, in looking at this, uh, here it is that the children of Israel that is uh, on one mountain looking to get to the, to the other uh, mountain. They, they, they see something on the, that mountain that they recognize that they, that they want to, to get to. Um, but, but, but something in the midst of what was on that mountain um, caused a distraction. Yeah. Yeah. Caused for them to want to detour. Caused them um, that in the midst of this, uh, that it got on their thought process so bad that it began to drain them. They were dealing with passivity. I, I don't want to focus um, um, so much on um, this moment on, on specifically what we find in terms of, of David. Um, I want to talk about this Philistine. Because this Philistine represents something in relation to um, um, a kind of spirit that will try to hover and, 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 and make you think that you can't move forward. Yeah, yeah. And so it is, it is, it is in this um, that we all identify that we have come giants in life. And, and there's things that I want us to look at in, in terms of this because um, when we're looking at challenges, challenges make life interesting. They are where we find there to be, come on, uh, these particular things, pressures, um, um, problems, um, um, having someone say pain. And giants, my brothers and sisters, um, um, also come in the means of where when you're facing um, um, things throughout life that come from time um, to time, you have to know the importance of how to deal with the major difficulties. Yes, yes, yes. This unbelievable giant that the children of Israel was looking at Scholars would say that it was uh, 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 an enormous size of somewhere between nine to ten feet tall. That this 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 uh, unbelievable person or thing was on that mountain. But in the midst of that, the children of Israel found themselves in the nature. Come on now of being fearful. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I get some real um, um, Christian folk that, that's in here today um, that, that don't want to be on your high hat for, for this moment, but that will identify, come on, you've had some fearful moments. Yeah. You, you've had periods in, in, in which you wonder what what you what were you going to do? How were you going to make it? Because why? There was something was in your way that began to distract you. Can, can, I, can I talk to some people for, for a moment? Um, giants come um, in, in areas called uh, resentment. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, resentment is, is simply where uh, you wish you would not have done what you did. Yes, I wish I had some real people talking to me here. Um, uh, you wish you would not have done where you have gone. You wish you would not have hung out with who you hung out with. Yeah. Because uh, it's time to be a giant. Yeah. Giants, my brothers and sisters, uh, come in areas of loneliness. Yeah. Yeah. You, 
you know, you can be around a whole lot of people and still be alone. Because it's something that, that, that takes over in the nature of you. Come on, tonight. Change, my brothers and sisters, come in the midst of guilt and shame. You ever been guilty or, or, or at shame because of something that has happened in the in the midst of your life? Oh, I wish I too many people that, that understand. Come on, you've had giants in the midst of where you are. Giants come in the midst of, of worry. That's why the Bible tells us be anxious for nothing. Come on, but to pray. Supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. I know you say you sanctify, but come on, I need some real people for just a moment that have had some worried times in the midst of life. Worried about your children, worried about your family, worried about your finances, worried about what was going to happen next. Come on, you had worried moments. Giants come. In the midst of discourage. Because yes. yeah. yeah. uh, all it takes is one phone call. Yeah. All it takes is looking at one piece of land. Yeah. All it takes is one thought that all of a sudden it leads to this moment. Can I keep going for just a moment? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Giants come in the midst of jealousy. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying you jealous. But you, you come and understand the reason why people talk about you sometimes the way that they do is because, come on, they're jealous. Uh, they're looking at you and seeing the hand of God on your life in the areas of you being blessed. And that's when giants come and try to break you down. Uh, giants come, giants, giants come. Let me talk to some real folk. Giants come in the midst of depression. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's that area of the, of the mental anguish that begins to take the thoughts uh, and begins to betwixt them and, and make you think that you are not who you think that you are. I wish I had some real people up in here because, you know, there, there are people who are preaching depressed and singing depressed and walking around. You don't know where certain things are happening in their midst, but I need somebody that will be real with me for a moment and declare, oh, we have giants among us. I know that we like to sit in on chandeliers and run around the church and lift up our hands and open up our mouth, and that's a good thing, but there's still things that we got to understand that come up. Look at somebody and tell them, giants are real. In the midst of hopelessness. Yeah, yeah. It's where, come on, somebody feels like this thing ain't gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. This thing ain't gonna manifest. Everybody ain't gonna have your faith in yeah. Everybody don't have your, your ability of, 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 of where you know that God will do it. Some folk, come on, have not taken hold to the uh, um, of Hebrews chapter number 11. Social media, 
you know, stuff. And, and you know, I, I, I just believe this because if I was to put up some type of post about what I'm going through, I could get about 300 people that will respond to my area of that need. But I remember putting up something one time saying, listen, we have, we have a lot of things that we hear about folk complaining about and people that they talk about. I need you to just, just come and say something good about what God is doing and good about somebody. And that thing was in hand. Yeah. Because people like to dwell yeah. in bitterness. Yeah. I wish I had some more yeah. 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 And they like to bring it in the nature of the church. Right? Yeah. And, uh, the service got to be about what are we going through? Yeah. Why are we dealing with sick circumstances? But somebody come to understand that they, they come on, giants must fall. Can I help somebody to understand that, that giants come, my brothers and sisters, in the midst of pride. Yeah. The Bible says that pride goes before oh. destruction. Yeah. And a haughty spirit on you yeah. before the fall. That's why I told you got to stay humble. You got to know how to stay humble. Yeah. 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 You can't just all of a sudden think that you have arrived, that you think that you have made it, and that you think that you have everything. Together because God knows how to come on. He cannot get down. He cannot get down. He cannot get down. He cannot get down. If you don't believe me, come here, Job. Job would tell you, even though he was a, a man who, who feared God and he was a, a righteous man, there was something in the midst of Job. I need you to take all of this now that not uh, the devil was after, but God was trying to get out of him. Because how many know, come on, you, you, get, you can become self-righteous. Yeah. Come on, you, you can become, um, 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 you, you can become religious. Yeah. Ah, giants must fall. Yeah. Giants come in the midst of doubt. Where you say one thing on Sunday. But you say something different on another. So, so it's in this that uh, we look at where the children of Israel were, were had to um, do three things. They, they had to um, confront their giant. They had to be challenged by their giant. They had to learn how to conquer the giant. What is it today, my brothers and sisters, in the midst of where you are, that you come to realize today that you've got to deal with the nature, come on, of a passivity? Yeah. And every in the midst of your life that uh, you, 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 are, you are not uh, uh, focused enough to know that you just can't let this You've got to realize the fact that for where you are, um, you, you've got to be in a position of, of knowing that, that God wants you to get to that mountain. But in order for you to get to that mountain, you've got to know how to fight. Yeah. Yeah. And I get somebody that understands today that you've got to know how to fight. What am I trying to tell you? You've got to know how to fight. Come on, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I can't get enough up from here. Yeah. Uh, because come on, this, this is not this is not about your neighbor. This is not about certain things that happen in your life. I need somebody that's with me here. That says, this is about me. Right. This, my brothers and sisters, is about the inner me. Right. Yeah. Inner me. Yeah. 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 It's the inner me. That's inner me. Yeah. It's where I come. In Romans chapter number seven, where, where he said, Every time I desire to do good, evil is always present. And so, in the midst of this, my brothers and sisters, 
What is it today that you got to recognize that you must, come on, you must, you must confront. This giant, my brothers and sisters, if you look somewhere around uh, chapter number 17, uh, verse number 4, uh, it deals with the fact um, that this giant that, that David saw uh, was, a, was a giant that had, watch this now, had great courage. And here's the reason why I don't say that to you. It's because I know you got courage, but so does the enemy.
the giant had an allegiance. It was based upon um, the things that was not of God. And in the midst of this, my brothers and sisters, the Bible talks about somewhere around verse number um, four that it deals with calling David an uncircumcised Philistine. I don't want you to miss that because an uncircumcised signifies that an individual is not in covenant with people. With people, not with God, but with people. And what's important to that, my brothers and sisters, is that we put too much stock in people yeah. Yeah. rather than in God. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather you be mad than for God to be mad. I need some people that says, my allegiance is with God. Yeah. It's like we used to say, for God I live, and for God I will die. Can I get somebody that's got an allegiance with the Lord in this place? That come on, you say, I believe God in spite of anything that might be going on around me. I understand that this is it's just like when Joel said, though he slay me. My allegiance is I don't trust him. I wish I had some folk that had some giants in your life. And you might be faced with a giant right now, but your allegiance is I'm still gonna give him glory. I'm still gonna lift him up. I'm still gonna give him praise. I need somebody that's got an allegiance up in here that I might be even going through the cave of a doula, but you declare that I Bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Somebody that's got an allegiance unto God, that understands the fact that no matter where I am, he will see me through, he will cause me to make it, and there's no giant in my life that's going to take me away. Now, in fact, Paul said it this way, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, things present, things come, will be able to separate me from the love of God. If I got somebody up in here, I need you to open up your mouth with your allegiance and give God praise for just one minute. I declare I might be faced with the giant, but that ain't going to stop me. That's not going to block me. That's not going to detour me. That's not going to discourage me. I won't give it this talk, but I am determined. I'm going to give God to pray. Somebody open up your mouth and magnify him and bless his name. I wish I had a few moments, but I'll tell you, giants seem unstoppable. And giants seem like, come on, it will always block you. But isn't it wonderful that when you understand who God is, you don't get into the things that's in front of you. Sometimes what you need to do is just get on your knees and declare and believe God for what he said in his word. Can I get somebody up in here that's got just a little bit of faith that understands it will move the mountain? Can I get somebody with just a little bit of faith that will stand and declare my God will do it? Can I get somebody with just a little faith that will declare though he slain me, I'm going to still trust in him. Can I get somebody with a little faith that says we're going to walk by faith and not by what we see. Giants may come up, but how many know that giants will fall? Look at somebody and tell them, get ready to go to the next mountain. Don't let nothing stop you. 
Don't let nothing block you, but hold your head up, open up your mouth, and declare, let us go to the other side. I wish I had a witness in here. Now give God some praise, give God your best, and declare it today. I'm confronting my giant. Come on and magnify the Lord. Jesus in the pardon of your sins. 
What must I do in order to be saved? The Bible declares, confess with your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And the word says that you will be saved. If you don't have a church home, we want to let you know that Rehoboth is a place where we're growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've already prayed, but I want you to know in this day that I'm praying that you will fight. Fight to the finish. Know that he that has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is not the end, but I need somebody to declare the beginning. Come on, this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning of what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and is not given to the heart. What God has been scored. But I'm here to tell you today, you confront your giant. Giants will fall. Giants will come down. I'm here to tell somebody, you will live again. You will see the victory. Matter of fact, if somebody already has the victory, come on, open your mouth and declare it with me. I've got the victory today. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Why? Because I told the giant, get thee behind. Victory today is what we declare in the name of Jesus. Come on, one more time, clap your hands all over the building, and let's thank God for his word. Let's prepare ourselves for our tithes and our offerings. As we prepare ourselves to give unto the Lord a portion of what he has blessed us with. We thank God for the gift, and we thank God for the giver. That you will add unto the measure you see fit, because God, you are way out of no way. And we decree and declare it even now. Thank God for those who have given by way of PayPal, those who have given by way of Giveify. Thank God for your gifts. Hallelujah, my check cash. We appreciate it. Hallelujah, because we're declaring nothing missing, nothing borrowed, nothing broken. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's bring our time to my offering now. Hallelujah. Thank you. 